This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. I got to let this world know that having Jesus in my life is what makes the difference in my life and that there is a difference. When they look at you and they look at me, they're going to see something on you that they don't see on me. No. When they look at me, I stand out. I stand up. I stand aside. You sad, I'm in joy. You depressed, I'm hopeful. That, ladies and gentlemen, is holy. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. This is your world. So let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are. Holiness comes from a word, and it reminds you, of, it, it, it means complete and it means whole. Complete and whole. So now listen to me carefully. If I were to ask you a question based on your past understanding of holiness, I'm wondering how you would answer it, and I want you to answer it sincerely and honestly. What is the opposite of holiness. I didn't ask you to answer it correctly. You already got the answer in your head. Just say it. Sin. Ain't that what you've been taught all your life? That when, if you're not holy, you're sinning. Because nobody talked about holiness until they looked at sin. So the opposite of holiness in religion is sin. That's what they said. So I'm just, just human me. I'm going to ask you that question again, and I want you to say sin. Some of y'all just, I don't feel like cooperating. Just tell us. <laughs> I don't want to go down this road. Well, I'm trying to plant this in your spirit so you can have it forever. Okay, ready? <laughs> What's the opposite of holiness? Sin. Wrong. <laughs> Wrong. The opposite of holiness, watch this, is being common like everybody else. Commonness is the opposite of holiness. Watch carefully now. To be common, that means that you're sharing alike. To be common means you in the church just like them who ain't in the church. That's the opposite of holiness. The opposite of holiness is when they sick, you sick. They depress, you depress. They broke, you broke. You just like them. That's the opposite of holiness, to be common. So tell me, why would somebody want to come to church and hang around people just like them. And then you try to seduce them to get saved, and they can't see the advantage. Why do I need to get Jesus when you and me just alike, except you believe in Jesus and I don't, we common. You just proclaim Jesus and I don't. But when I'm depressed, you depressed. When, when I'm worried, you worried. Uh, when I'm fighting, you have the same fight. I lost, you lost. Uh, 
Listen to me carefully. <laughs> so when God says, be holy, <laughs> what is he saying? He is saying, stand out. When God says, be holy, he's saying, separate yourself from. Why? He says, you're my people. In other words, when people of the world are worried, when they are broke, when they are sick, you stand out. They're worried, you in peace. They're broke, you receive all your needs met. They're sick, you believe you already healed. Holy people are peculiar people that won't be common with every other people and made their minds that just to give God glory, I got to stand out. I got to separate myself from. I got to let this world know that having Jesus in my life is what makes the difference in my life and that there is a difference. When they look at you and they look at me, they going to see something on you that they don't see on me. No. When they look at me, I stand out. I stand up. I stand aside. You sad, I'm in joy. You depressed, I'm hopeful. That, ladies and gentlemen, is holy. It's maintaining my spot in him and not allowing what's going on in the world to forget about who I'm in. Oh, glory be to God. There'll be some difficult times coming. And when those times come, Jesus makes the difference. When you are being overwhelmed and all kinds of things are happening, you're going to have to find out where Jesus is because holy people look to Jesus. God's people stand separate from that. Holy literally means separate from the world. That's what it, it literally means separate from the world. Not where sinning and not sinning is concerned. See, you're focusing on the wrong thing. It's your position to be opposite to the common man. Ain't nothing coming about a holy person. You remember 1 Peter chapter 2, 9? Flip over there just for a moment. I was just want to put it in your head. Let me put some scriptures in your head. And then I'm going to show you something so fascinating, so mind-boggling, so chewy. You just have to put your seatbelt on when you see this. I've been trying to figure this scripture out for 33 years. You know, the one on the mountain of transfiguration? All that talk about he appeared and these folks came here and all that kind of stuff. You know, there got to be a reason why he showed all that. Now, look at what he said here. But you are a chosen generation. Say chosen. chosen. You are a royal priesthood. Say royal. royal. You are a holy nation. Say holy. holy. You are a peculiar people. Say peculiar. peculiar. That you should show forth the praise of him who has called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. So, based on this scripture, you're chosen, you're royal, you're holy, and that makes you peculiar. Honey, if, there's not, if, if you're not peculiar, there's something missing in your declaration of holy. Amen. I got to be peculiar. It's like when the devil turned your lights off, or maybe the devil didn't do it, you didn't pay your bills, and the lights got turned <laughs> off. And the lights got turned off. <laughs> I don't know if that's a good example, but... Peculiar people just keep praising the Lord and go find a candle. Peculiar people just won't allow themselves to be common. Now, follow this now. So, with this in mind, let me now show you a biblical definition of this holiness. 1 John chapter 4, 17. Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment because, here's holiness, as he is, 
so are we in the world. Holiness is just simply being as he is. Whatever he says is right, you say is right. As he is, so are we in this world. We are as he is, holy, holy. Not because of how we behave, but because of our position in him. He holy, we holy. He righteous, we righteous. And he holy, we holy. So we are as he is. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18. Oh, praise God. As he is, so are we. 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 In the midst of stress, as he is, so are we. Don't know where the money coming from. As he is, so are we. You just got to keep yourself separate by reminding yourself of your peculiarity. As he is, so are we. Now watch this. But we all, with open face, beholding, underline that word beholding, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord. And by beholding, by just beholding, we are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. He says, if I just behold him, I'm going to be changed and the Holy Spirit will guarantee it. Amen. Just by beholding him, just by beholding him, just by beholding him, just by beholding him. So holiness is a person, his name is Jesus. Holiness will not come by looking at yourself. Holiness is in Christ. True holiness looks to Jesus. Amen. True holiness looks to Jesus. We study the life of Jesus because as he is, so are we. Go to John chapter 17, verse 16, 17 real quick. The true holiness looks to Jesus. If you're thinking, how am I going to achieve this? By beholding him, by looking at him. How am I going to look at him? Where is he? Where you at? By beholding him, by looking at him. Verse 16 says, they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Verse 17 says this, sanctify, separate, set aside them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Oh, I know how I can see him now. I can behold him by beholding the word. I can behold him by beholding the word. How do I look? Through the word of God. And then the Holy Spirit does the transforming. How do I look? Through the word of God. Then the Holy Spirit does the transforming. God, this is so powerful. From the very beginning, even at the Mount of Transfiguration, was trying to communicate a message. Look at him. But we got too many things we look at. Now, let me show you this now. Mark chapter 9, verse 2. And after six days, Jesus taketh with him Peter, James, and John, and leadeth them up into a high mountain apart by themselves, and he was transfigured before them. All right, so who did Jesus take with them? Call the names out. Go. Peter, who? Peter, now, you know Jesus just don't be doing nothing, just be doing it. So you got to ask yourself, why did he take Peter, James, and John? That was a very specific reason why he took specifically Peter, James, and John. All right? Let's go to the next verse. And his raiment, or his clothes, became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can whiten them. Four. And there appeared unto them Elijah with Moses, and they were talking with Jesus. So now who do we see on the mountain of transfiguration? Elijah, Moses, and, and Jesus. Elijah, Moses, and Jesus 
on the mountain of transfiguration, and Peter, James, and John were watching. Oh, God. Verse 5. And Peter answered and said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here, and let us make thee tabernacles, one for thee and one for Moses and one for Elijah. Something happened. Watch this. For he whence not what to say, for they were so afraid. Seven. And there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son. Two words. Hear him. Next verse. And suddenly, when they had looked round about, they saw no man anymore except Jesus only. Now listen to me carefully. John. John's name is translated, watch this, grace. James. James' name is translated supplantive, which means to replace. Peter. Peter's name is translated stone or rock. Here's the message that he wanted to communicate. John, grace, James, replace, Peter, stone. Grace, replace, stone. What was written on stone? The law. So I got you three here because I want grace to replace the law. Watch this now. So on the mountain, you have Moses who represented the law. Elijah, who represented the prophets. <laughs> and Jesus, who represented grace and truth. And then all of a sudden, the law disappeared and the prophet disappeared and there was no one else to look at but Jesus, grace and truth. He was trying to show you that we no longer need to look at the law. We no longer need to look at what's written on the stone. We no longer need to see Moses. We no longer need to see Elijah. This is my beloved son. Hear him. He's the only one left. Get your eyes on him. Hear him. has replaced the law. And Moses and the law disappeared, and Elijah and the prophet disappeared, and the only one they saw, the only one they saw, holiness is about looking at Jesus. Are you listening to me? Oh, boy. Hebrews 12, verse 14. Brother Dollar, you don't understand. The Bible says, without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. That ain't what it said. But this is what they do with holiness. And what that means is, go turn there. Hebrews chapter uh, 12, verse 14. What that means is, if you're not holy enough or if you're not behaving right enough, you're not going to see the Lord. And that's put fear in people. And people were afraid that they were not holy enough to see the Lord. They were afraid that they were not holy enough to go to heaven. And then they get back into operating according to the law based on your performance and your self-effort. Verse 14 says, follow peace with all men, comma, and follow holiness. He said, without which no man shall see the Lord, but it has a colon, which means it is not the end. Why? Why? He says, looking diligently, lest any man fail or fall of the grace of God. You see, if, you're, if you fall from grace, 
you won't be able to pursue peace. And when you fall from grace, you won't be able to pursue holiness, and you're not going to be able to see the Lord. Because holiness and peace is all about being able to see the Lord. And if you fall from grace, you won't be able to achieve any of them. And falling from grace means to fall back into self-effort. It means to fall back into your performance. It means to fall back in trusting in what you can do for Jesus instead of trusting what Jesus has already done for you. The glory of the law frightens people, but the glory of grace attracts people. So God has a way to deliver us. Go to Numbers 21. 5 through 9. I'm going to show you the, the significance of now beholding him. The whole thing is behold him. Behold Jesus. Behold him. God's got a way of deliverance. Look at what happened here in the wilderness when they were bitten by serpents and they were all about to die. In verse 5, and the people spake against God and they spake against Moses. Wherefore have you bought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no bread, neither is there any water, and our soul loath thee like bread. Six. And the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they bit the people, and much people of Israel died. Now, how many of you know this was, this was pre-cross? This was the God that you ought to be glad you ain't got to deal with today. Because if you had to deal with this God today, to speak against a man of God, you would die. Thank God we have a God of grace. I still don't want you speaking against him, but, you know, thank God we got a God of grace. <laughs> Therefore, the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. And Moses prayed for the people. Look at the next verse. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fiery serpent, set it upon a pole, and it shall come to pass that every one that is bitten, when he looketh upon it, he shall live. So notice, God's way of deliverance is to take your eyes off yourself and look upon him. Somebody says, but that's a serpent on a pole. No, that was prophetically a prophetic image of who Jesus was going to be on that cross once he absorbed the sins of the world. Hallelujah. And he says, if you look upon that, see, you got to quit looking at yourself. You got to get your eyes off yourself. The key, God's way of deliverance is get your eyes off yourself. All the issues we have in life, all the problems we have in life, it, it, you, you, you got your eyes, just you, 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 you. Get your eyes off yourself. Get it on the Lord. Behold Jesus. The key to all deliverance, get your eyes off self and get your eyes onto him. Holiness does not consist of our feelings and our experiences. It consists of beholding Christ. Amen. Now, let me show you something. Matthew chapter 14, 22. Matthew 14, 22. All right, now watch this now. Holiness is all about looking unto Jesus. Now watch this. And straightway Jesus constrained his disciples to get into a ship and to go before him unto the other side while he sent the multitude away, verse 23. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up into the mountain apart to pray. And when the evening was come, he was there alone, 24. But the ship was now in the midst of the sea, tossed with waves, for the wind was contrary, 25. And in the fourth watch of that night, Jesus went unto them, how? Walking on the sea, 26. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, is it a spirit, or the Greek word here is phantom or ghost. Is it a ghost? And they cried out for fear. Next verse. But straightway, Jesus spake unto them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. Next verse. And Peter answered him, said, <laughs> so I don't think Peter really believed him. It is I. Peter said, okay, if it be thou. <laughs> Peter, like, I need some proof. <laughs> if it be thou, then bid me to come unto thee on the water. 
Now, he put Jesus in a situation. Well, how was Jesus supposed to respond? It be not me. <laughs> he only had one thing he could respond to. It, 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 it is I. He says, if it's you, then bid me to do this. He says, well, it's me, so I guess you're going to have to come and do this.